ones that yip, yip, yip. I'll do my own. Oh my God, move. I'm in an ambulance. <laughs> Oh my god, your attitude? My attitude? You just traumatized a child. You need to learn how to talk to children. Why? They're disgusting. They're disgusting? Well, I can't <laughs> argue with you about that. Coming through! Okay, that's illegal. <laughs> like a fly by the seat of my pants kind of gal. It's a life of adventure. It is. It's just a dot, dot, dot. It is. An ellipses, if you will. That's right. Into the stratosphere. You know what's done. Oh, John. Ooh! Yeah. When the boats are rocking, yeah. don't come yeah. and I can. Jump back in the water anytime. <laughs> yeah, good. Here we go. She didn't. Uh uh, she didn't. <laughs> <laughs> to stay in my apartment alone yeah. on my own for even more than like five minutes. I'm better off working. Okay. <laughs> I just said alone on my own. <laughs> Did you hear me? No, I didn't. <laughs> I couldn't hear anything. Let's go. Whoa. <laughs> Web is about a woman who discovers that she has clairvoyant powers and she doesn't really understand what they are at first and she starts to see fragmented images and flashes and visions that come towards her. Come on! And she slowly comes to realize that she can actually see the future. Come on, get your stuff. Let's go. <gasps> Let's try that again. Mark? Ready, here we go. Uh, Madam Web is a female empowerment story and comedy. There's a lot of heart. There's a lot of action and explosions. Get down! You have a bunch of badass women kicking butt. That's really hot, you know. <laughs>
Madame Web takes place across three timelines. So it basically deals with how interlocking characters all intersect, but we meet them and don't understand their connection until we realize their connections in the future, not the present. To see the future clearly, you have to heal the wounds of your past. That sounds like literally every therapy session I've ever avoided. Yeah, I'm always looking for stories that surprise the audience. And so I think in this respect, this kind of storytelling with these kinds of characters, it represents a fresh and original way of approaching the audience. Will you let me drive? What are you talking about? I, just, I don't know, I just have a weird feeling. I was drawn to this project because I was very intrigued by the prospect of a female superhero's superpower being her mind. Cassie, she has a complicated backstory in that her mother died at childbirth. She's pretty lonely. She grew up in the foster system. She's kind of a little bit rough on the edges. And in this story, she gets to realize that no, her mother actually was doing something that was meant to help her. I'm sorry, sorry to tell you that your baby has myasthenia gravis. There are some promising leads in the Amazon. That's why you went there? Her mother was a researcher looking at spider venom and spider properties, and as she's pregnant with our lead character, Madam Web, she transfers the spider powers to her. So, in a sense, it's a rebirth for her. The power of your mind has infinite potential. I was also really intrigued by how she becomes a sort of maternal figure to three younger women while empowering them to be heroes. Cassie is a really fun character, but then watching her kind of transform into Madame Web is really fun. When Cassie has the accident where the car falls off the bridge and into the water, it basically causes her clairvoyance and her powers to kick in. She begins to experience her clairvoyance. She thinks she's losing her mind. Wait, we just did this. She meets these three girls who, through her clairvoyance, she understands that she needs to save their lives, and so she does. She kind of just throws caution to the wind and gets really invested in three strangers. It's like a woman's natural instinct is to protect, is to give, and it's almost like her instincts to do that mixed with her powers, it goes together perfectly. And when you take on the responsibility, Great power will come. She actually finds that the responsibility in taking care of other people is fulfilling for herself. These four female superheroes are, you know, all very different in their own way. They all bring different skills. And sort of Madame Webb, by her very name and by the very conceit of her, brings all these worlds together. And they get to know each other and they get to support each other and empower each other into the best versions of themselves, which are these superhero versions. The theme of empowerment throughout the movie comes from the fact that each of them go on their own journey. Cassie has to learn about her past in order to embrace the future. And each of the girls come to learn that they had strengths within them that they didn't know. The movie is about lonely people who don't have family, who meet and end up becoming like family to each other. Cassie! Can we trust you? The movie's about finding unexpected family, in a way. And so it was about how do we create that family. So one of the things I like to do in the rehearsal process is sit down one-on-one -on -one with each of the cast and talk through the script. I'm Cassie. Okay, what are your names? It's a great way to sort of hear from the actors what they're thinking and sometimes read different parts because that's often a way to find out how each character thinks about the other one. New York and my mom lives back in LA, but we don't need your whole life story. One of the scenes that I also really love is the motel scene where they do come together as a family. Well, I've been learning some things too about my mom. They were all so brilliant, and I remember sitting there rehearsing, and it's one of those moments where I thought, wow, I think this really is gonna work. I think they are gonna start to feel like a family. One of my favorite Isabella moments is when she says, You're leaving. And it's a moment where you just really feel that they need each other. I have to go and figure out what is going on. How? Oh. They finally feel that family that they've been searching for their entire lives. And they start to love and care and want to take care of each other. You have to go to Peru. 
This story is different because it's really grounded in reality. They are real, and they are messy, and they are complicated. I'm getting a little tired. Okay, okay I'm right here. <sighs> Cassie, wake up! Please! Cassie! Come back, Cassie. So I remember when Celeste came on set, there in their costume, and I said, don't you wish you had that when you were younger? And they're gonna be that for someone, and I think that's fantastic, and I hope there are young women out there that will see themselves, that will see an opportunity for them to be their own superhero in the future. I really like the idea of ordinary people being heroes. Action. I have always really loved Marvel movies and Sony Marvel movies. This is an all-female superhero film. We have a deep cast, and these roles are a real tribute to the script. And acting. As a Gen Zer, it's like I'm so relieved to see a superhero movie about people who look like me and about young women. You don't think this is weird, how we're all connected? And I feel like the cast just couldn't be better. All the girls are amazing. Dakota and Sydney and Isabella and Celeste are so incredibly talented and so much fun on set. It's a, it's a cool thing. I'm a superhero. I'm sick. When you first meet Cassie doing her job as she does every day, she's a paramedic in New York City. I think the fact that she's hyper intelligent and super soulful and that her greatest superpower is her mind, that was very enticing to me. Vimar? I've been a big fan of Dakota for a long time and one of the things I knew I wanted to do with this movie is make it a psychological thriller. And I'd recently seen Suspiria and I thought she was just magnificent in it. She was clearly a committed actress that was not afraid to go the distance. And then we met and we talked about the movie, we talked about the character of Cassie, and then Dakota just had all those sensibilities and that was it. I've never really had the opportunity to do a very physical role. It's really exciting for me. You know, this is a new kind of role for her, so it's been fun to watch her meet the challenge. This is 210 en route with a 42-year-old female in cardiac arrest. I've been an admirer of hers for a long time. Her work is so real and so varied. She's really adept with comedy and then can like turn on a dime and break your heart. I think that Ben and Cassie, you know, if Cassie wasn't so emotionally unavailable, they'd probably be in love. Let's see what your future holds for you. Adam Scott is playing Ben. What if I don't want to know? Well, it's just a cookie. He's got a great wit. He's got a great wisdom, which I think is what you see in Ben later. I've always been a big fan of Spider-Man since I was a kid, reading comic books and stuff. And so this entire universe is something I've always wanted to be a part of. The added bonus, working with Dakota and SJ, it was a really easy decision. My scenes with Adam Scott, I loved so much. No, you were right. They're roping you in. Yeah, thank you so much. You're welcome. Because I think we both come from the sort of improv comedy world, so we could really work well together in that way. I love Adam. I've been a fan of his forever, and but yeah, he's, he's so funny and cool. I played this quiet, shy, very empathetic, sweet girl. I was really connected to her. She's lost. She has a father who now has a complete new family, and she doesn't feel like she belongs in this space in this environment in the beginning of the movie. Sydney's the best. She's she's so fun. She's such an amazing actress, so prepared. I've always wanted to be a Girl Scout. Of course you did. I'd actually worked with Sydney previously. In fact, she and I both did our first American television episode together. We'll be okay, Julia. We don't need a babysitter. Oh yeah, sure. Just three teenagers alone in the woods. Definitely not the opening of a horror film. So that was really exciting. We met I really felt that she was right for Julia, and so once we got her in place, it was then a matter of how do we find the other girls. We should go over there and talk to them. Really? Hmm. 
No, you want to. I love Maddie because she does whatever she wants and she doesn't care what people think about her. And her main goal, I feel like, is to realize her true potential in everything she does. And action. I remember Celeste O'Connor's tape. Okay. When I saw them in a mustard hoodie, they were so raw, so natural, energetic. I just knew there was Matty. Matty! I think she's so badass. <laughs> what I love about Anya is that she is a very intelligent, quick-witted, know-it-all. What good is it? What good is science? Okay, enough. But she's not the stereotypical idea of one in the sense that her presentation to the world is very feminine. It's very, like, fashion-forward. So I really appreciate that. You know, you can have it both. You can be intelligent and you can be a pretty girl. What? Where are you going? Um, the girls, they're smart and they're ambitious and they work really hard and they're funny and, like, sweet. And that's just so wonderful to be around. You have three girls who all are lost in their own way, all feel like they don't belong, all feel like they are outcasts in their own environment, and they all come together. And Celeste, Isabella, and I also became really, really close. You know, we had to do a lot of really fun and challenging things, like running at 6 a.m. and like being in the harnesses and being up high and spinning and jumping. Yeah, it, it really felt like summer camp to be with them. We have a group chat, it's called the Boo Crew. We, to this day, it's a year later, talk in it every single day. I'm really, really happy and fortunate that I got to work with them. You're Ben's partner, I'm his sister-in-law, Mary. It was funny, because when I was asked if I wanted to be in Madam Web, the first thing everybody said was, um, it's to play a real person, not a superhero. And I was like, huh. Either I paid myself or Ew. my water broke. Ew. I had known Emma just a little bit before, but have been a fan of hers for a long time. And she's just such a fun person to be on set with and, uh, and a really terrific actress. Everyone okay? Yeah. Are you okay? Yeah. Um, what is that? The villain in this picture is, is named Ezekiel, and it's played by the French-Algerian actor Tahar Rahim, who is one of the most amazing people in film today. Ezekiel Sims is a fascinating villain to me. Here's a guy who grew up poor and watched his entire family starve to death. He seeks out a secret tribe in Peru, Las Arañas, who possess inhuman strength and health from a spider. I don't understand. I've been searching for that spider for years. He wants to catch this very spider to get those powers. Hey, Mark. For the greater good. Hey, Mark. Which makes him a villain Woo! with the best intentions. God! He's really, really special, and to get him to play the, the villain is a real coup for the film. And drop her. Working with SJ was an absolute pleasure. She knows what she wants, and uh, she's open to um, suggestions. SJ has been an incredible leader and guide. She's extraordinarily detail-oriented. There's nothing that gets by her. And she's incredible to work with and to watch work. Really an inspiring woman. Exceedingly disciplined. She's making a comic book as grounded as it can be, given the fantastical elements that we're dealing with. And then you do that exactly where you're standing now. But she has such a great vision for the film. I was really receptive to all the ideas that she brought to the table and being able to work with a female director who is able to take in everybody's ideas and considerations was really cool. Yeah, SJ is great. She is 100% absorbed in this world uh, and has such a deep love for all of these characters and approaches all of it uh, emotionally first. Yeah, I think what makes this movie different to me than other superhero movies is that it follows the relationship that these three young girls develop with each other and also kind of centers on their journey of what it looks like to empower themselves. Much better. What I love about Marvel characters is they represent the hero in all of us. Ready, background and action. Especially with Madam Web, 
It seems like anybody could be Madame Web, and that's what I think makes her so exciting. Action! Getting to be in a spider suit is like probably the coolest experience of my life. When I found out who the character was, like, I, I got a bunch of the comics. I love to be a part of it. I walked around thinking, I'm, I'm actually Spider-Woman. This is the coolest thing I'll ever do in my entire life. Well, I've devoured uh, many, many comics over the last few years in preparation for this. And I think what's exciting about comics is they give you such a visceral visual punch when you read them. So certainly when we look at those, it's like, how can we use that sort of like the cinema within comics and bring that into the universe? There are aspects of it in the comic books that you can draw on in terms of characteristics, in terms of mental abilities, in terms of some of the lore of where the spider comes from. So part of what we have dug into is not only Madam Web's lore, but the lore of the spider. The comics are definitely a foundation from which we leap, but this is a very different version of Madame Webb to the comics because when we meet her, she's much older, and this is really her origin story. So we got to go back and imagine how she might have ended up where she is, and hopefully there'll be lots more to uncover. She's a clairvoyant who has a lot of influence and impact. She's very, very present in many, many of the comics. And I think the most interesting thing about the Madame Web movie is it's how we get to the point where she first appears in the comics. So it's an origin story. I always say, if you're going to do a superhero movie, do an origin story. Madame Web is just such an interesting prospect because she's unlike any other superhero. Most of them have these superpowers that come from strength and ability and agility. And with her, it's all psychological. And I found that fascinating and something incredibly exciting to explore. Two camera, three camera, Mark. Two Mark. She's not flying around and, and spinning webs, but she is weaving tentacles or, or webs into the world as an information gathering tool. And that's the sort of visual analog, but it's really a, like a mind expansion. The tribe who have been the keepers of the spider, if you would, have a philosophy about what it means in terms of the venom and what it can do. In her case, and in, in many cases, they have different clairvoyant abilities. And in her case, being a weaver means that she can weave together the strands of time. So she can see different timelines of the future and she can see how they interweave or don't interweave depending on how events occur. So it's a very powerful ability to see into the future and potentially affect the future. When you take on the responsibility, great power will come. There's a moment where all three girls are in danger at the same time, and in order to save them, Madame Webb has to go deep into her mind's eye and send three versions of herself out to save them. And she discovers her power and is able to astral project her body to each girl at the same time and make sure they don't die. <laughs> Julia's powers, her webs are different than what normal webs are. Her webs are electric, they're lightning. So they can electrocute whoever she hits with her webs. And then she also can use them as actual spider webs as well, where she can swing from them, she can drop with them. Maddie, she's amazing at fighting. She has great strength. And then on top of that, she has these huge spider legs that kind of can help her with like landing and flying and punching things. They're really cool. Anya is a very analytical individual. She's got an understanding of like science and physics and she's probably the one girl in the room could ex who could explain like quantum mechanics. Like she's just, she's just really smart. Anya's superpower, she creates this like disc, this spider disc that like can propel and like go anywhere she wants it to but then it'll always come back like a boomerang and it's got like these like legs on it that are really spiky it's like a, it's it's a cool thing it's it's i'm a superhero it's like bold and brave but when you're bringing it to like a human being perspective you know there's a lot more that goes into that there's something about a group of women that i think is so powerful and when you make them all superheroes it's pretty undeniable I'm a superhero. There's a lot of action. 
explosions, fights. We had to do a lot of really fun and challenging things like running at 6 a.m. A lot of running. Ready! There was so much running. Action! <laughs> I'm actually Spider-Woman. This is the coolest thing I'll ever do in my entire life. Before we started filming, SJ was like, I think you should put on some more muscle because you're a paramedic. Action. You're lifting things and people. So I did train so that I had endurance and stamina. It was a lot of training. We had them in as much as we could. Each one of the team put in quite a bit of work. We had about two months of training. It was like in our bones by the time we shot it. We really just had to train on how to move like spiders and we had to train on these harnesses. This is so awkward. And getting our flips down and our kicks down. We did a lot of wire work. We did a lot of stuff in harnesses where we were having to like flip around up in the air or like jump long distances. Who are you? There's this one spin I do at the end. That was really fun because I did all this dance training when I was younger and never got to use it. Finally, I'm out here pirouetting. When we first introduced Julia as Spider-Woman, I wanted her to drop into frame like one of the iconic comic book drawings upside down and then she spun. So I worked a lot of times on the wires, learning how to move more physically like an aerialist would. We had them all come in and train together with their stunt doubles multiple times a week for hours. I have a lot of photos and it's really funny of me just hanging upside down and just waiting for action. And I'm like, oh my God, my close up, I'm going to look so ridiculous because the blood's going to be all in my head. Three, two, one, go. The big fight. Action. <laughs> it's kind of a Bruce Lee style and jumping on the wall and fighting and dodging webs and attacks and all. That was cool. How are you doing back there? You no, know, last time I was in a vehicle driven like this, I was being shot at. Cassie's driving skills are, I don't know if you would call them skills. I think actually Cassie is more of a stunt driver than an actual driver. We do everything with second unit and kind of understand the path and shoot a bunch of array plates and give her a blueprint to be able to be successful in what she's doing. So we'll be there before the song is over. Our second stunt corner, Jeremy Fry, took the coat out to a driving school in Los Angeles and let her slide cars around. Get ready. I really love driving and I pick it up really fast. So I learned how to do a bunch of tricks. I can do some high speed 180s. You're showing off. Not yet. Dakota's done quite a bit of driving. Obviously, there's some sections in there you'll see in the film that probably weren't her, but. She has done quite a bit of driving. Next film, I'll be Tom cruising myself all over. This will be our crash. Immediately afterwards, give the set over to stunts and special effects. One of the most fun things I get to do in my job is build beautiful things and destroy them. We crashed a real car through the diner and shot it in multiple passes and multiple cameras. One of the very last scenes was somebody just driving that taxi into the front door of the diner. I wasn't allowed to do that stunt. Can't imagine why. And then we'll CG in the Ezekiel character so that when he's hit, he's flying across everything. We were actually there watching it happen. It was scary. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, they can explain it as much as they want, but when it actually happens, it's so much more dramatic than they explained it to be. Watching that was absolutely thrilling. Three, two, one, action. The final scene of the film takes place on the rooftop. You don't really want to shoot an action picture four stories up, so we created our own elevation and safety that way. So it is a precarious set. There's lots of different surfaces and heights. Really tricky set, cantilevered catwalk, sloping crazy, expressionistic eye beams. All of it has to be made safe. Visually, the most intense as far as like color, as far as like brightness of light and those things sort of interacting together. Action. The building is the home of thousands and thousands of fireworks, so there's boxes of fireworks exploding everywhere. <laughs> Dakota's really good at doing like heroic poses, so you have that kind of performance on top of fireworks and the lighting and all the explosions. You know, a lot of it does happen in post, but it starts with a great foundation of everyone doing a good job on the set. Being in the harnesses and being up high and spinning and jumping from heights. And so I think that stuff naturally was so fun for all of us. It's so much fun. Four, three, 
weeks, man. I was in the best shape I ever been in. <laughs> it was so exciting to learn how to move like a spider. Our relationship developed naturally through us like being on set together. I love them. We just had a really cool like physical bonding experience every morning working out together. It really felt like summer camp. The world of Madame Web is often deliberately mysterious. Sometimes you just have to touch the right thread, then it all becomes clear. Get down! Amongst the many threads, there are hidden references which we have layered into the movie. Hopefully you'll enjoy finding them. I am SJ Clarkson and I am the director of Madame Web. Right from the opening of the movie, there are hidden references. For example, the company referenced in the Peruvian jungle campsite, Ramita, is an homage to one of Madame Webb and Ezekiel's creators, illustrator John Ramita Jr. As we head to 2003 New York, Matty's school uniform might seem familiar. Shouldn't you be in school? The costume design team matched her uniform to the images from the 1999 comic book, Spider-Woman, Volume 3, Number 5. If you take a closer look at the truck Matty is skated behind, you'll see it's the Daily Globe, which is a major rival of the Daily Bugle. Come on, buddy. The hospital where Cassie and Ben drop off Julia's stepmom is St. Timothy's. That's the very same hospital where Madame Webb picks up an injured Matty Franklin in 1999 Spider-Woman Volume 3, Issue 2. Will you let me drive? Cassie and Ben's colleague O'Neill, played by the brilliant Mike Epps, is named after Madame Webb's writer and creator, Denny O'Neill. This is the train in Mount Vernon, right? I hope not. The 2.30 Mount Vernon train is a reference to Ezekiel's first comic book appearance in 1999's The Amazing Spider-Man, Volume 2, Issue 30. While we're here, look carefully at the design of Matty's skateboard and you'll see the word five. This is a reference to the gathering of the five, where in the comics, Matty Franklin obtains her powers and becomes one of the Spider-Women in The Amazing Spider-Man 441. Gathering the Five is also the source of Madame Webb's gift of immortality. Yeah. Okay, guys, my Uncle Jonah can totally help us. I'm gonna call him. Do you have a phone? You know they can track those nowadays, right? No, you can't. Hey, you can't do that! Matty's reference to her Uncle Jonah is not a random name choice. Her uncle is none other than the Daily Bugle editor-in-chief, J. Jonah Jameson. Right, so... Diner? Ow! The four-star diner, which by the way confounded New England locals when it was built for the film because it looked like a real working diner, shares the name of the diner where Peter Parker recalls hanging out during his high school years in The Amazing Spider-Man Volume 2. <gasps> I hope they have cherry pie. Matty's craving for cherry pie is a nod to Peter Parker's well-known love of his Aunt May's recipe. Spider. <laughs> Ezekiel's position here matches the character's iconic pose from his comic book debut. This is 210 with a 42-year-old female code. The 210 call sign in the ambulance and on the docks as the girls rescue Cassie. Please, Cassie! Come back, Cassie. Is a direct link to the 1980 Amazing Spider-Man issue 210, the first ever appearance of Madame Web, which was published on November the 1st, 1980. We got takeout, but we didn't Tongue know. Tongue chicken is perfect. How'd you know? You don't have to be clairvoyant to find a few more Easter eggs in Madame Web. What is that? Use your observational powers, trust your senses, to see what other secrets you can uncover. Yeah, we're in this together. Yeah. Okay, we are still not doing a high five. I know, it's not cool. <laughs>